Welcome to another video. We're going to find the Maclaurin series of sine squared x. And remember, a Maclaurin series is a Taylor series centered at zero. So whatever formula you would use to get a Taylor series is what you would use for a Maclaurin series. It's just that every time you try to plug in something, you're plugging in zero. And that's it. I intend to show you two ways to do it. The traditional way of you taking many derivatives or just using your trig identity based on a previous knowledge of Maclaurin series. Let's get into the video. So let's start with the Taylor series formula for all functions f of x is equal to the sum from n equals 0 to infinity of the nth derivative of that function centered at x. Well, now in this case, because we're dealing with 0, I'm not going to write x minus a, okay, when I get here. So it is centered at x over n factorial, then you have x minus we have x. You know what? This is just the Maclaurin series. I'm not going to write the whole thing. Okay. Um, centered at a, in this case, let's write this to be zero. And okay. So this is the Maclaurin series formula. Okay. Because we're plugging in zero for x. Okay. When we're taking the derivatives, not here. Okay. Just here to evaluate the derivatives. So because this formula requires that we start from n equals zero, it means that the zeroth derivative is the function itself. You will not do any differentiation. So I'm going to go here and plug in zero for the function. So firstly, we have f, the zeroth derivative of x will be equal to sine squared zero, which is equal to sine zero squared which is zero squared, which is zero. I know I'm writing everything, but I just wanted to see what's going on. Now, the next one is when n is equal to one. So we'll keep climbing, okay? This is now gonna be the first derivative. So we're gonna write it this way. What is f prime of x? Well, we're trying to differentiate this. It's gonna be sine x squared, but we're taking the derivative of it. If we take the derivative of this, we we'll apply the chain rule. The chain rule here is going to be 2 sine x cosine x. But this is the formula for the double angle of sine, which is going to be sine 2x. So this is sine 2x, and we know if we plug in 0, f, the first derivative of x, will be equal to sine zero, sine two times zero, which is equal to zero. So it appears the first two values we got are zeros. So what you want to do is you keep going until you get the first non-zero term. Otherwise, you just keep going. The second derivative of the function is going to be the derivative of the first derivative. So it's just going to be sine two x, we take the derivative. If we differentiate this, it's going to be the chain rule. It's going to be cosine. It's going to be 2 cosine 2x. Cosine 2x. So we're going to get cosine 2x. Then the derivative of the inside will come out here and multiply it. So we need to evaluate at x equals 0. So we say if we do this at 0, it's going to be 2 times cosine 2 times 0 which is two times one because cosine zero is one and that gives us two. So the very first non-zero value we got is two. And where will this two be used? Well, that's this thing here. See this thing here? That's two. So let's go to the next one. If we plug in zero, so I'm gonna stop here actually. This is gonna give me four times sine zero which is equal to zero. So if you continue, you keep differentiating and differentiating. So the next one, we're gonna differentiate this. You're gonna get eight cosine two X, which is gonna give you, but it's gonna be negative. 
wait, the derivative of cosine is minus sine. I'm sorry, this is minus sine. Okay, so this is gonna be zero. So what's gonna happen ultimately is that I'm just gonna write them out. So it's gonna be 32. Okay, so what I wanna show you is how you're going to write the general formula. Let's write the terms first. So based on what we have, we have a bunch of zeros. You're gonna ignore the zeros because zero, look, if this is zero, zero times anything is gonna be zero. So they don't count. So we're gonna to stick to the ones that are not zero, which are these ones. And this one starts from when n is equal to two, okay? So we can say that f of x is equal to, um, we have the terms now. Let's start the terms one by one without using the sum. So we're gonna have the first case of two. So we're gonna have two times over rather. So that ha two occurred when we did the second derivative. So we're gonna have two over two factorial times x raised to power two. Okay, don't forget this two is from the number in the derivative. Whereas the two on top is from the result of our evaluation of the derivative. And this one always goes with this. These two are always the same. Okay, let's move on. So the next term that is not zero is this one. And it happened when n was equal to four. So you could immediately say, this is gonna be minus eight so we're gonna say plus minus eight over, because this was four, it's gonna be four factorial, and this is gonna be x raised to power four. These two must be the same. And then the next one that's not zero is when n equals six, so we can write it. So we can say, and it's positive, plus, um, we have 32 over, it happened at six, is six factorial, x to the sixth, and we just keep going like that forever. I'm gonna erase this when I'm done so I can show you the other method. Okay, now this looks beautiful because this goes on to infinity, we can write a shortened formula and say, now we're gonna start afresh. This is our new series, we're ignoring all the zeros. So this is now number one, this is number two, this is number three. So this can be written as the sum from n, equals one, this is number one, number two, number three, to infinity of, what are we seeing? Something is consistent in all I've written, what's under? The next one is gonna be the eighth one and it's gonna be written as eight factorial, so eight factorial. So it's easy for you to say, I'm going to have even numbers in the denominator. The short way of shorthand of writing even numbers is to say to n. Beautiful, right. Okay, now, I said something that what is here is always what is here. Is it true? Yeah, because it's just that the top one will not have a factorial, so we're gonna write x to the 2n. The only problem here is this one. What are we gonna write? Because this is, when n equals one now, this is two. When n equals four, this is three. When n equals six, this is, this is two raised to the power three, this is two raised to the power five. So it looks like we're reducing the even number by one to get the exponent here. Subtract one from this two, you're gonna get the exponent on the two. Subtract one from this, you're gonna get the exponent. You have to make observation and that's it. So it means what we have here is two raised to power, this number minus one. Okay, but there's a problem. The problem is this is not positive. See, this is positive, negative, positive. You would anticipate that the next one is gonna be negative. Why? Because of this switch from sine to cosine. So how do you take care of this negative number that's alternating? Well, you have to introduce negative one raised to a power, and that power will ensure that 
the negative shows up where it's supposed to show up. But we need to raise this negative one to a power. Let me tell you how to figure that out. Look at the very first term. Is the very first term positive or negative? The first term is positive. So you cannot raise the first term to n because negative one, I mean ne minus one to n, because negative one raised to power n means when n is one, the first term is gonna be a negative number because negative one raised to power one is negative. So you wanna shift it so that, but we can't, we can't shift back because of where we are. So we gotta do, we shift to the right, it's n plus one. This is your f of x. This is what we're looking for. I'm gonna leave this on the board while I start all over. Instead of using the actual derivatives, we're gonna use something that we already know and we're gonna get the answer. Okay, suppose your trig is very good and you already know some other Maclaurin series, then this is gonna be much faster. You don't have to do differentiation at all. And this is what you're gonna do. You're gonna say, hey, you gave me sine squared x, but Recall that cosine 2x is the same thing as 1 minus 2 sine squared x. You use this a lot in, in integral calculus, in integration, because this is how you do your, how you can integrate a power, okay? So here, it means if we try to make, we can say that sine squared x is equal to divided by 2. Now, if you already know the Maclaurin series for cosine, you don't have to worry. And that's one of the most popular ones that we know, the general formula. So we know also x to the 2n. That's it. So, instead of me writing cosine 2x, oh, it means if I put 2 here, I just need to put 2 here too and raise it to power 2n. Okay, so let's, let's fix that first. So we have cosine 2x, because what we have is not cosine x. So cosine 2x will be n equals 0 to infinity of, um, let's write it as negative 1 raised to power n over 2n factorial. But what we have here is going to be 2x raised to power 2n. Okay, so this is the same thing as 2 raised to power 2n times x raised to power 2n, which is going to look like 4 raised to power n, or 2 raised to power 2n. You know, I'm going to split them into bits. Let's just write it that way. So this is going to be 2 raised to power 2n x raised to power 2n. Okay, so this is what we will be working with. And this is very easy. Firstly, look, there is a minus sign multiplying the cosine 2x. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a minus sign to multiply this. Okay? So it's just so to reduce the confusion. So if I use a minus sign, minus cosine 2x will be a minus sign multiplying this. Well, that minus 1 is going to be multiplying this guy. So it becomes minus 1 times minus 1 raised to power n. Well, you add the exponents, that gives you minus 1 raised to power n plus 1. So what we have actually is going to be from n equals 0 to infinity minus 1 raised to power n plus 1 over 2n factorial 2 to the 2n x to the 2n. Okay, what's remaining? I had to erase everything. No, you know what? I should write this as 1 half minus cosine 2x divided by 2. Okay, I think this is a neater way because what's going to happen is I just need to divide this by 2. Okay, let me do it here. Assuming I divide this by 2, 
it means I'm dividing the inside here also by two because constant because constants can go in and out. If I bring in two to divide something here, it means I'm only focused on this guy. If I divide this by two, this becomes two raised to the power two n minus one two n. Okay, we can put it all on top. So, what is left to do? This doesn't look exactly like the last answer we got because something is just not right. Something is just not right. Oh, there's a one half here. Okay. Now, anytime something like this happens, you just want to investigate to see if there's a way to get rid of this one half. How? Let's go in. Remember, this is the sum of terms starting from n equals zero then n equals 1. So why don't we plug in n equals 0 and see what's going to happen? Okay, because we might be able to get a number that eats this guy up. So what we have will be equal to 1 half plus, if I plug in 0 for n, see what's going to happen. Minus 1 times 2 raised to power minus 1, that's going to be 1 half. x raised to power 0, that is 1 over um, 2 times 0 is 0 factorial. Do you see what just happened? Then the next term is going to be when n equals 1, then n equals 2, but we're just going to say, hey, we're just going to continue our formula, but n is no longer starting from 0, it starts from 1 now to infinity, and then we can still write our old school formula, x to the 2n. That formula still stays, but we're no longer starting from 0 because we have pulled out this guy. What does this guy tell us? Tells us this is 1 half minus, 0 factorial is 1, so it's minus 1 half plus this sum. This cancels this out so that we can say sine squared x is equal to this. Never stop learning. Those who stop learning, stop living. Bye-bye.